Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining in. We'll be starting shortly at uh, 6.33 as we wait for more people to join in. Uh, it's 6.33, so we will begin our webinar. Thank you all for joining us for the webinar on youth participation and leadership. I am your moderator, Husna Julius, an advocate, a certified secretary, and a Women on Boards uh, junior member. The webinar is organized by the Women on Boards Network, which is an initiative aimed at promoting and encouraging women to leadership positions, as well as capacity building uh, for the women who are yet to join uh, the leadership positions. It, is, it has been organized on behalf of the Junior Membership Program, which is a membership program for the young adults in order to uh, train them on issues to do with corporate governance and board leadership from a very early uh, age, so that once they become of age, they're able to uh, fill into these spaces with much experience and skills. And so the webinar will be one and a half hours long. It will be recorded as well as live stream on our YouTube channel, the Women on Boards Network. And we are glad to have you here. And so the background of the webinar is the concept of youth part participation as well as leadership. The youth make up a majority of uh, a percentage of the human population yet yet they let me mute stella apologies for that okay she's muted now so are uh, the youth make up a majority of the human population and uh, for a very long time they have been left behind with matters on participation as well as leadership. And so it's very uh, important that we bring them to the table uh, and when it comes to decisions that make uh, affect their lives and daily, daily, uh, their daily activities. And so the webinar seeks to define the concepts of youth participation as well as leadership and, demy and demystify some of the myths and around youth participations. Uh, kindly mute yourselves. Let's see, mm -hmm. okay, that's dealt with. Uh, so the youth will be, uh, I mean, the webinar will be looking at some concepts about youth leadership as well as participation. It will also demystify this, uh, some of the myths around youth participation, as well as the challenges that the youth face. And then our speaker will be able to tell us some of the government initiatives that are in place to support youth participation as well as leadership. Uh, before we introduce the guest speaker, I'd like to recognize some of the participants and I can see our chair, uh, Ms. Catherine is in. Perhaps Ms. Catherine, if you could say something. Thank you very much, uh, Husna. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for joining this webinar this evening. CAS Abdallah, I have followed your journey with 
interest. And I have followed your journey because you're such an amazing, amazing leader. And thank you so much for always availing yourself and making time for the Women on Boards Network. This is not the first time, but I think you're really, really at home, really at home today because you're amongst the youth. Uh, and I know that uh, reading up on you, the youth are really central to what you hold dear. And so this is, today I'm really looking forward um, to you just sharing some of those nuggets about where you've come from, how you've done it, where you're going. And I have a dream. Allow me to share my dream with you that one day, one day, that one day very soon, and I want to emphasize that, you're going to be one of the leaders on the world stage. That is my dream. And I know that given the trend that you have started, that is a dream that is so, so achievable. So thank you so much on behalf of the board of the Women on Boards Network for speaking with the youth um, this evening inspiring them. I know a number of them are in school and th so they have not been able to join us. But we are uh, fortunate to have a number who have joined this evening and we know that we are going to enjoy. I myself, I'm going to stay here throughout and I know there are so many of our senior members who have told me, you know what, I know you have said it's for junior members, but sorry, we are listening in. So Thank you so much. Allow me to hand back to you, Husna. Thank you, CAS. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you so much for that, uh, our chair. And so uh, just uh, some house rules. Uh, we will be able to have a question and answer after Madam CAS speaks to us. And so make use of the chat session and the, quest and, the question and answer session. So. Um, who is Miss Nadia? Who is our guest speaker? Our lovely and very beautiful <laughs> Waziri. Uh, so Nadia uh, Ahmed Abdallah is a committed state officer who has had a distinguished and quite illustrious career in both public and private service. She's also a counselor on uh, the New Voices Council for the Political Foundation. She has more than two years of experience working with the government of Kenya as the youngest deputy youth minister in the Ministry of ICT innovation and youth in the Republic of Kenya with, with a solid background uh, in bachelors of public relations as well as mass communications with a minor in journalism and a master of arts in international relations and cultural diplomacy. She has exhibited excellent analytical and problem solving skills, ability to handle multiple projects while producing high quality work in a fast paced deadline oriented environment. So she's a practical expert in development and uh, as well as implementation of public policy, communication strategies, lobbying, advocacy, the list goes on. And so she is a perfect fit for us to have a speaker on matters youth, leadership and development. So Waziri, welcome. Thank you very much, Husna. Thank you very much, Ms. Catherine. Good uh, evening to everyone and amen to your prayer because I believe that it's a prayer. <laughs> um, so hi, everybody. Um, to those who are already in, hello. To those who will be joining, I'm also live on Instagram on my page so that whatever I share, other people can also uh, listen to. So today I want to talk about youth participation and leadership and what does that mean for young people, whether you're in Kenya or even beyond. Um, so youth participation and leadership just means being visible, being vocal, being confident and being intentional. Now, why have I used those words? It's because in order for you to influence change to yourself, to your community, to your country or around the world, you have to be intentional with what you want to achieve. You have to be vocal with what you want to achieve and you actually have to be very, very confident with what you want to achieve. And why is this important? Because without confidence, you're not going to achieve anything. And why do I say this? It's because leadership is Number one, I always tell people leadership is a spiritual thing. 
And number two, leadership is not an easy journey to go on. The reason I'm saying that is because um, being a leader, it doesn't, it, it, it's nothing to do with you. It's all about the people who are around you. And the people who are around you will always have different ideas and different expressions. So you have to understand that when you decide to take that path of being a leader, you have to agree and allow both positive and ne negative criticism. And that's because it's how it is. We are just like these five fingers. We are all not the same. And the mistake a lot of times we make as young leaders is that we always want our opinions and we always want our ideologies to be accepted and to be validated. And if they're not, then we end up moving away from leadership and we just say, oh, it's not for me, it's for other people. Now, what happens when you say that? Other people take up the spaces, other people make decisions for you. And then when that happens, as youths, we tend to complain and say, oh, but nothing is a reflection of ours. So we have to be very intentional. When you are developing interest to be a leader, ask yourself this question, what type of leader do I want to be? A lot of times we tend to believe that leadership is only political, but no. Even the, the person who just is in their village or in the ward or in their constituency, and they tend to like put their voice out and put their opinions out, you are a leader. You can be a leader in any type of industry, be it medical, be it law, be it whatever it is, you can be a leader. Yeah. All you have to do is know your intention and know that when you take that path, you're going to go with it and you're not going to give up. So what does it take to be a youth leader? It doesn't take a lot. It just takes you agreeing and you deciding to be that leader that you wanna be. And what do I mean by that? You don't have, there, there's no manual or requirements that validate you to be a leader, not, not at all. You just have to have that goal, have that intention and have that interest, okay? And a lot of times we don't realize this, but I, our interests, our intentions develop at a very young age. Personally, um, I used to be called, you know, Kimbelembele, you know, um, and I used to be told that I'm a chatterbox and I used to be a noisemaker in school. And when I used to see things not going right, I used to always complain about it. So for a very long time, people used to think I'm a troubled child. I used to be called a drama queen um, and I used to get into fights from time and time. But then I came to realize that all that was just a sign for my parents and the people around me to tell them that Nadia is actually going to be, or she is a leader of her own. And so as much as I was being hushed, on the other side, my late mom used to just let me do whatever it is that I wanted to do, you know? And so I remember very well when I was 13, and I say this a lot because I'm still on my way there, that when I was 13, I had aspired to be two people up until today, if God wills. Oprah Winfrey, and the late Kofi Annan. So I developed an interest in clear communication and articulation. So from very young, I used to make sure that I talk about what I wanted to do, talk about this, talk about that. So that's a noisemaker. In fact, I was made a monitor in school, but then it made me realize that my way of speaking was actually signaling people to tell them that I need my ideas to be validated and I need my ideas to be heard. And so I continued doing that. I used to read magazines, I used to read books, I used to do this. But then as I grew older, I realized I had a passion for humanitarian work. I had a passion for speaking and standing up for people. And because of the different challenges that I went through both in primary, university, and even as a teenager, I realized that I also want to be able to help others. So then I identified not only am I a communicative leader, but I'm also a leader who wants to inspire people through the journey that I went through. So you have to look at yourself right now. And right now I tell people, young ones, I say that there's a lot, we have technology. So you can go online, search for different tests to help you understand what type of leader you are, to help you understand what type of personality you are. 
you also have to look at the type of friends that you have, who are the type of people that you're interacting with. And then also take an interest, have, have uh, someone that you look up to. It doesn't have to be somebody who's achieved something so big. It can be just anyone, anyone who you think has some qualities and some values that you have. Now values, that's one thing that will take you to be a very good leader. A lot of us young people, because of the zeal and the fire that we have, we forget to cultivate values for ourselves. Value systems help you lead. Value systems create a really good environment, create a really good place for you. So make sure that the one quality you have to have is your values. What are your values? What do you stand for? What do you believe in? And do you believe in what you are advocating for? Um, then there is another question that I was to ask, like what are the myths about youth leadership? Hmm, there are very many myths. The biggest myth is that you're too young to lead. Nobody should ever tell you that you're too young to lead. I used to believe that I'm too young to lead, but my actions would say otherwise. So before I became a CAS, I was a social entrepreneur and I was a social change maker. I was focusing a lot on my community and trying to see how can I help women because I, I grew up in a space where I realized women were very, very much um, intelligent, but they were limiting themselves from what they say. A lot of times when you put yourself out there as a woman, um, the perception is that, oh, she wants attention or, oh, she wants a boyfriend or something like, you know, it, it always has to be something. But I, I just said, no, I'm going to put myself out there because I want my story. I want my voice and I want to influence change in this world. So this myth of you're too young to lead, this myth of you don't have enough um, information, this myth of you're too young to understand what is going on should be left behind. If you decide that you want to take charge and you want to influence something in your life or something in other people's life, mute the noise in the background because people will always, always have an opinion about you. And another myth, I think it is young people or youths only want things easy. It's not that we want things easy. It's just that we are innovative enough to know how to resolve issues on a much simpler way, you know? And a lot of times we've been taking in that, yeah, we want things easy, we want things easy, but we don't. In fact, we have things very hard because the competition is very high, the opportunities are very low, and the population is very high. So what do we do? As we keep going, as we keep moving, we are thinking and coming up with innovative ways to simplify our lives, to simplify our livelihoods, and to simplify our own space. And so that's another perception, another myth that is there, which I think it, it's not really real. And then another myth um, that is there is about um, confidence. Um, I hear this a lot. Um, you know, young people are not confident enough to, to say something. I think we are confident. It's just that we don't have the spaces that are there. So you see people like myself always target to create safe spaces for young people to speak because they're very limiting because of the myth that we are not confident enough to take up space. But we have to be prompted. As young people, we have to be prompted we have a space that have to be created in order for us to now show our confidence out there and be able to keep growing from one space to another. How do we improve and, or uh, and increase youth participation? Very simple. You have to actually not wait for anyone to create that opportunity for you. Yes, I've talked about being prompted, but now on the other side, if you have an idea if you have your cell phone and if you have the capacity, you don't need anyone to give you permission. You want to do something, sit down, draw it up and do it and show it out there. Right now, after COVID-19, we've seen how technology, we've seen how social media is such a powerful tool. In fact, a lot of leaders now are using social media to actually create social change, to influence and to, um, to educate. And so what you need to do now is create your social spaces. I tell a lot of young people, 
um, create an online portfolio. So I have an online portfolio. If you go online, Swahili Girl Leads, Girl with a U, you will find I have my portfolio up there. I went on YouTube, taught myself how to build a website, went on Wix, built my website, did a few photos and created a space. So right now, before anyone, like before I send either my CV or before I send anything, my, my bio data, you can go online and just Google Nadia and you will see the profile. So I want young people to do that. Because we have the spaces online, let us create and increase our, our participation. Let's increase our visibility. Make sure you really invest in your social space, in your social profile. I appreciate you know, the different things that we use social media for, but try to also use social media as a tool to build your own self. Another way is to identify what type of person you want to be identified as and try to reach out to spaces and places where you are going to benefit. Most of you either are in school or out of school. So there's a lot of engagements you're doing. In school, you have um, um, clubs that are there. When you have friends, you can interact. These days online, you can find out anything. You can join some certain networks online. And that's how you create and improve your participation because you are networking with one another. I tell young people, gone are the days where our, our financial capital was the number one thing. These days, even without financial capital, if your social capital is good, you are able to create a presence, you're able to create an impact, and you're able to be in spaces that you would have not even imagined to be. So make sure you also do that. Number three, be very inquisitive. Try to find out, Google. If you're interested in things to do with the government and, and civil service and, and civic education, Google a certain ministry, Google a certain um, issue that you have, go on Twitter, check out certain pages and this and that, and then find out, like, how can I engage? How can I participate? How can I, like, be there and be present with these things? Because it's actually going to help you. It's going to help you in terms of reaching out to those places. Number four, reach out to people like me. People like me means that people who are easily reachable, people who are in spaces that can actually help you and amplify you. So I might not be able to reach 100 of you, 100% of you, but I can tell you that I've actually had very direct impact with a few of the young people who are around. Some have come to intern in my office, some I talk to on Instagram DM, some on my WhatsApp, some on Twitter, whatever it is. I think it's about time that we try to look at us and I know and I understand most of the time young people look at leaders and we only want to associate with those who maybe are political and stuff, but try to also look at those leaders who are easily reachable and try to find out what common goal do I have or what can I get there? And then beyond, please help me with money. What else can this leader help you with? I tell young people, when you go to a leader or a busy person and you're saying, I, I don't have this, I'm short of this, they will completely go blank. I'll, treat you, I'll teach you a strategy. If you want to actually get help and you want to have some impact, go up to a leader and tell them, I have this problem that requires your solution and I need you to just share with me and tell me and advise me. Now, when you start that way, then they will take interest, they will sit down and advise you. So make sure you also reach out to people who are, you're able to reach out to. And don't be afraid to just reach out to the people who are far reach. I remember once I sent an email, I think to, I'm not sure, I sent an email, I think to Oprah Winfrey, I found her email and I sent to it. I know it's like, oh my God, how is she gonna read? And I remember when I was young, I also wrote a letter to Tyra Banks and as much as yes, she's not the one who responded, but in, in our PO, our PO box, I received a letter and it was Tyra Banks' picture with a signature. So be daring. You want to increase your participation, be daring with the different things and the different interests and the different people that you want to do because life is too short and we are still young. And so, you know, take opportunity and be bold once you do it. 
Um, somebody, I, I was asked, is there a difference being in public sector and private sector? Because I was, before coming into this side, I was a social entrepreneur and a social change maker. There is a difference. The difference is when you're in public office, you have more responsibility because it's now on a much larger, like for me on a national platform. So all eyes are on me. So there's that weight of being Nadia. Then there's that weight of being a young leader. Then there's that weight of being a young woman. And then there's that weight of being a young African female leader. And, um, but the most fantastic thing I tell you about having opportunities to be in public spaces is that the networks that come with it. I can tell you that before I joined government, um, I didn't know as many people as I know now. Uh, before I joined government, I never thought I would be on huge platforms talking to people and global leaders and influencing it. Now, the reason why I usually document all my things is because I'm opening up a borderless empowerment space. A lot of times, you know, leaders are used to let's do this after we're done, we just go after we're done. But for me, I realized everywhere I go, I have to take you with me visually. And, you know, being in public spaces, it has allowed me to do that because I understand when in private places, sometimes because of the rules and regulations of a certain office, you cannot do that. But I think being in this position and the way I was very much empowered by my cabinet secretary and his excellency, the president, Uru Kenyatta, it has enabled me to have more confidence. Being in public, uh, public um, service, it's actually built my confidence because now I'm able to speak to people. I'm able to articulate much better. I was telling a friend of mine today that I've become very articulate and I say what I feel because I believe that that's how it should be. And I think that's how that's the 21st century generation of leadership. It's about just speaking what you believe and speaking your mind and really articulating your issues. So. But again, I tell people, um, whether you're in private, you're in public, if your vision, if your value system, and if your belief is the same, then you'll achieve whatever it is that you need to achieve. Um, what are, uh, okay, let me see. Does being a youth leader mean you let go of your true self? No. So <laughs> growing up, um, you know, we see, we see our seniors. We, I, I grew up seeing, you know, different leaders, different world leaders. And there's a certain way that you have to be. You have to be in a certain way. You have to do things in a certain way. But as I say, there's a new wave. And I don't know how many of you have been following, um, but the prime minister of Finland, there was a video that went viral. She was with her friends and she was enjoying herself and it went viral. And I like how she approached it. She apologized for the video going viral she apologized for the video going viral, but she also said that she's human. And she said that everyone needs to look at her like that. And I tell people this, being a leader does not mean you stop living your authentic self. Of course, there are some places you carry yourself differently, but don't lose your self, authentic self. And you know, we 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 come from some cultures where we make leaders look like demigods, but we're not. We're just human. We cry. In fact, I cry so much when the pressure is so high. Um, you know, I get disappointed. I do this. I do that. So I'm I'm no I'm human, but I don't lose myself. And if you realize when you check on my Instagram, you'll find me dancing on 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 my stories, or you'll find me cooking or you'll find me talking and saying I'm not good in fact tomorrow there's a TikTok that is going to be out that I did uh, with Fiber. they came to interview me about tech and we did a TikTok and uh, I'm not sure how it's gonna be but uh, you know I said why not on one side I influence policy and the, on the other side we're going to dance and make sure we teach people how to do it so you don't lose yourself you just have to embrace your true self and make it personal. Leadership is spiritual, it's personal. Make it personal, make it spiritual, and then you'll just be able to be guided. Um, solutions implemented into the youth space being inclusive. So how can we make the youth space more inclusive? I think 
the solution will have to come from us youths. How do you want to be included? Do you want to sit down in your house and complain? Do you want to not participate in uh, uh, elections? Do you want to not participate in civic engagements? Do you want to not participate in school? How do you want to be included? The only way you can be included is by actually going out and participating. You have conferences or forums in school, participate in those. You have civic engagements that need uh, opinions, participate in those. You have leaders who come and tell you stuff, challenge them and ask them. You have ideas, vocalize them. We can only be included once we show ourselves participating. We can only be included once we really, 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 really understand the importance and the dynamics of having things that would influence us moving on. So it's all about self-work. It's about you first and about what you believe in. And then from there, you move on. Someone's saying they can't hear anything. Can you guys hear me? Can I be heard? Yes, you can. Okay, yes, okay, yes. okay, okay, okay. Um, so what are some of the initiatives? Um, so, you know, I come from the Ministry of ICT Innovation and Youth Affairs. We have quite a lot of initiatives. It's a very big ministry. Um, we have one of the most fantastic initiatives that I loved and I even registered, which is um, Ajira Digital where we are creating other uh, job solutions. So you, as long as you have an ID, just go to igeradigital.go.ke, register there. And then after that, um, take up any course. There's very many courses there, take up a course. And then from there, you have an alternative way in making money. So that's one, you know, we have, um, what else do we have? We have in the youth side, we had the KO, Kenya Youth Employment Opportunity Program, where it was specific for 17 counties, but it was very specific and targeted. We wanted to create alternative ways of making money again, which is through soft skills. You know, a lot of times as young people, we are targeting to always just go get that degree, do this, do that. But we were like, what if you actually train yourself to be a beautician, you train yourself to be a plumber, you train yourself to be this. How can you now work and harness that to be able to be better? You know, we had the presidential digital program as well, where the school children are being taught about um, how to use digital education and how we can amplify our spaces and how we can have more young people included. You know, um, we had the, um, uh, we went to the ground. So we had one of the biggest that I always, and I tell my, I tell people I'm very proud about, actually I have the book here. Um, it's Kenya Nimimi, you know? And I will tell you something, Kenya Nimimi started off as just an idea with uh, two of my officers in, my, in the office. And then I ran it through, before running it through my cabinet secretary, um, I actually met with the UNFPA uh, resident uh, country rep, told him about it. And he's like, you know, let me come to your office and then you tell me about it. And now this is about being daring. So I went to him and I had like a small budget and I was like, oh, and I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my God, this is a lot of money. And I went and I told him, so I have this, it's for young people and, you know, being out of, uh, on the other side of the wall, I realized a lot of young people, we don't, we don't feel like government thinks of us. We don't feel like government looks at us. And I said, why not come up with a campaign that will include everyone? And I pitched to him and said, oh, this is such small budget. Boom. One thing led to another. Told my cabinet secretary about it. Ten months later, His Excellency the President launched Kenya Nimimi nationally with me. At 29, all I did was take a bold step. And so we collaborated with different developing partners and we decided to go across the counties and we decided to go, we, we were targeting specific issues. We were targeting FGM, we were targeting uh, early child marriage, we were targeting teenage pregnancy, we're targeting mental health, um, environment conservation. So it's a lot. So as a ministry, we decided to take it up and we decided to now create it and harness it as a whole. You know, other than that, we have the youth fund that was giving or still giving um, loans, interest-free loans to young people. As long as you have a business idea, you're able to get it. There was youth fund, there was women fund. So there's, there's a lot of programs and a lot of things. And a lot of times I'm being asked, how come we don't know about these programs? 
even I didn't know about these programs before I became a CIS. And I'll tell you why I didn't know about these programs. I didn't know about these programs because I didn't think these programs are for me. Number two, I didn't invest enough interest to find out what these programs are for. What does that mean? I did not Google what these programs are. I did not ask what does government have for us. I did not find out who my chief is. And in that, I did not find out who my youth officer is. And so that's why I keep saying, it's all about our work. Yes, we can talk about this and that and that, but ourselves, have we done the work? And I'm being asked, how do you, um, how do you tap into these opportunities? Go to the websites, especially for those people who are online here. I believe we are all tech savvy. Go to the website, find out what does a certain ministry do? Find out who is the minister, who is the CAS, who is the principal secretary, who are the officers. Find out things. As young people, we have the ability to harness information, get the necessary information that you need, and then after that, you'll, you'll be able to do it. Now, that's on government side. How do you now tap into other opportunities that are out there? Again, be, very re be a research-oriented young person. First of all, know what you are interested in, and then research. Find out. What is it? What does the which UN bodies look after youth? Which UN bodies focus on um, on on uh, women? Find out what civic uh, organizations are there. What foundations are in Kenya? What foundation are giving grants? What foundations and how do you get a grant? If you don't know how to write a grant proposal, go on YouTube. Find out how do you do that. That's how you acquire skills. Gone are the days where information and help is going to come to us. You know. Because we are in such a competitive world, you have to have that value addition as an individual. What's your value addition? What's your strongest point? For me, speaking, articulating is my strongest point. Writing is my strongest point. So anywhere I go, I make sure that I say something that will always make someone remember me. Number two, I make sure that I intensely, 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 um look at my social presence especially right now i'll tell all of you something right now the uh, people who hire those who hire oh, i forgot the name anyway yeah they look at your social presence what are you doing on social media you'll be asked put in your linkedin link put in your instagram put in your facebook put in your twitter it's not like they want to follow you to add on the followers no they want to know what type of person you are so to my youths be very very careful about who what and why you post something online because the internet does not forget yes recruiters headhunters the internet does not forget i i'm a 90s kid okay and we are, you know, at that point where there was no technology, but then again, we got into technology. So there's a lot of things that I did and my friends did that there is no, um, there's no, you cannot find evidence anywhere. But the generation now moving forward, there is evidence. So be careful of what evidence you put. Not that I'm saying you shouldn't have fun. Have fun, do whatever it is. But remember that you have a future a future that you need to actually look into, a future that you need to build and make sure that you build that future. Um, let me see, what else before I, I hand it over to Husna? What forums or channels do we need to use? As I've said, if you're able to teach yourself how to build a website, please have like a very normal, simple website and put all your achievements there your youtube your instagram if you're a vlogger if you're a youtuber whatever it is instagram creates that instagram page if you find someone and you want to be their men you want them to you want to be their mentees reach out to them whether they're going to say yes or no the fact that you've reached out you've gone a few steps ahead okay so it's it's all about doing work and then the last thing is i want us to really pay attention to our mental health I'm very big at that. We have to take care of our mental health because it is the one and the most important thing that we need to do for ourselves. Emotional intelligence is very important. A lot of us lose opportunities. 
a lot of us lose spaces a lot of us lose a lot of things because we are not emotionally intelligent enough to understand that life doesn't go according to how we want it to go but it goes according to what you put out there whatever you put out there god the universe is going to give you back but again when a rejection comes or a disappointment comes to you or someone in school or in the office has offended you how emotionally intelligent are you to know that i shouldn't react this way i shouldn't say this i shouldn't do that but i should treat it in a very good way a lot of us go through anxiety i have i have anxiety we go through panic attacks some of us experience acute depression sometimes we 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 are just low sometimes we're just sad what do you do to help yourself get out of that i understand there's a lot of pressure right now especially with the youth you know there's the whole i have to make money i have to have a i have to have a job uh, i have to have a home for the girls I, we have to get married before we are 30 for the boys i need to have money before i can marry i mean there's a lot a lot a lot of things so the pressure is a lot and a lot of times even our parents don't understand us you know so how do you protect yourself from that you just have to invest in yourself a lot take your if you find that there's a lot going on buy yourself a simple notebook write down your emotions if you feel like it's too much talk to someone if you feel like someone is not helping and you need medical attention reach out to someone who can connect you to someone else without a healthy world without a healthy nation there cannot be any development there cannot be any growth so we have to be healthy here in order for us to be healthy here and in order for us to grow our country and as individuals so at the end of the day leadership doesn't have a manual you will walk the path you will make mistakes you will fall you will cry you will be challenged you will be questioned you will be mocked things will be thrown at you sometimes you will miss opportunities sometimes you won't even know what you're doing the goal and the secret is to keep going on because you depend on your values and you depend on yourself to keep showing up because leadership is not just about you it's about the people that you're also influencing mm -hmm. and this is not for me to say that you should put pressure on yourself no it's just to say that before you fill your own cup or before you fill someone else's cup make sure your cup is at least 3 quarters full because it takes a lot it takes a lot but people like myself and the others who are out there are paving the way because there are those who paved the way before us then there are us who are now continuing that legacy and there will be others who are going to go on and on all we have to do is remember that you do not need to apologize for being authentically you and you don't need to apologize when you make a mistake because one mistake results to 10 folds of achievements that you have so i think that's all for me for now husna um i hope uh, it was great <laughs> and yeah i'm sure there's uh, i'm not sure what's next but yeah thank you oh wow thank you so much nadia for that i don't know about the rest of you but i do want miss nadia to stop talking cuz she has so much experience and so much to say to the youth and she's you can tell she's really passionate about it as well <laughs> yeah so thank you so much miss nadia for that and i think there's so many things we picked from the webinar and for me i believe i picked your opening statement for just magical you say youth leadership and participation means being confident and being intentional so before you decide to get in that space on youth leadership and participation you have to be intentional you have to be confident you have to be able to tolerate whatever comes your way to be able to actually have a seat at the table because it takes a lot as you said a lot of challenges <laughs> to be able to be a youth leader and uh well i also think what you said on um, just doing it having an idea and just doing it on whatever platforms you you told us you worked in the private sector before moving to the public sector and you just posted youtube videos you have your own platform and i think it's also important for us leader or rather youth to be able to have that platform and have that courage to go for it instead of just saying i have an idea but 
I don't know, maybe. And then just sitting on it and when it really could be helping people. And then you also talked about um, being inquisitive and just asking questions as opposed to, or even just a quick uh, Google search, right? Uh, so I think it's also important to use whatever tools we have within our power to be able to find out about our interests, about our our likes, our passions, as you said, the government initiative. The only reason we don't know about them is because we haven't taken the interest to know about them, right? <laughs> and so I think uh, whoever is in this uh, uh, webinar should be able to take that initiative to just uh, find out more about whatever they're passionate about and just go forward. And also you talked about having a value system. That's important, especially in that leadership space where you have to make decisions, it's really important to have a value system that drives you to do better, to be a better leader every single day. And also uh, being, being aware of the kind of leader you are. Some leaders are, for, uh, I mean, strict, the old traditional leaders, but leaders as you, <laughs> such as you are very youthful and very easy to access. So we appreciate that. Um, being a leader does not mean being just a specific type of leader. There's so many uh, types of leaders and it's upon us to be able to um, find out about them and then pursue them. You also talked about um, creating opportunities for ourselves, right? It's important not to just say, what, can, what is my government doing for me? My government is not doing anything for me. You know, uh, my, my boss is not even doing anything for me. What are you doing for yourself? <laughs> you know, that's the important question. What are you doing for yourself? And Create opportunities. As you create your own opportunities, you're able to create other opportunities for others. Uh, for, for instance, your Kenyan Mimi uh, initiative, it was just something you came up with and then went for uh, um, one okay. And it's a, it's a global or rather it's a national uh, platform and initiative that's helping the youth in general. And then you also spoke about uh, leaders being human. You know, <laughs> at the end of the day, before we are leaders, we are human beings. Before you were uh, the chief administrative secretary, you were Nadia Ahmed, you know. So being able to keep in touch with your humanity and your personhood and your uh, whoever you are, your character, and not losing it in the name of leadership is really important. Um, also, which mental health. Above all else, we have to prioritize our mental health. And so thank you so much, Nadia. Those are beautiful, beautiful nuggets to us, to older, to the older. Anyone needs this uh, sort of uh, knowledge and power. And we're so grateful that you took your time to be with us today as the youth. Um, we thank you as our Waziri <laughs> for all the things you're doing and all the groundwork. Because I remember you said most of your work is very field related. It does not need to be desktop. You have to live and actually um integrate with the youth and be able to understand them so that you can be able to better uh, serve them. So for that, we appreciate you so much. Thank well, you. thank you so much. Thank and you. so um, we can go to the question and answers uh, section. And so if you have any questions for Ms. Nadia, this is your opportunity. To there's, a, there's a question someone, uh, Catherine sent me directly. It says, okay. as a cast, was there ever a time you felt there was pressure on you to act older? If so, how did you handle it? There was never a time that I felt the pressure to act older. And the reason as to why this is so is because I, everywhere I go, I would tell people I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest. And the day His Excellency, the president appointed me, he said, you know, now he has young people and now with the government backing, let's see what we can do. So I, and that's what I said, I embraced myself. I embraced the young me and made sure that I'm going to lead according to my space, according to my age and according to who I am. So whatever I did, I have very high respect for all my seniors, very high respect and I like the fact that they also looked at me like one of them, but just a younger person who has ideas and being innovative and doing this and doing that. So I just never felt or, you know, I was colorful in my outfits. I still am, as you can see. Um, I used to dress in, I mean, I still do jeans and t-shirts when I know I'm going to the ground. You know, I, I dressed, worked, spoke, 
and did everything according to my my being my age and so i think that's one thing when you're a leader don't and that's the thing if you don't know what type of leader you are you're going to be able to to change yourself just to fit in don't shrink yourself to fit into a certain space when you have a purpose in life to actually do good and help other people out there um another one what is the biggest leadership challenge you have faced and how did you overcome it um <sighs> The biggest leadership challenge, I think it's um, it's really the, the time, okay? In terms, I say baptism by fire because I, I didn't have sufficient time to actually embrace and learn things. So I had to learn things as I was going. I had to learn systems as I was going. Um, and so how I overcame it is every day I was intentional what I wanted to do. I was intentional what I wanted to achieve. And anytime I felt like it was too much, I would cry. I am such a cry baby, but crying helps. So I would cry, but then I would wake up and say, you know, I'm going to do this because being in this space is not only about me. It's also about those who are looking up to me. It's about, uh, the intention that I have, and it's about everything that is incorporated in that. Um, did anyone look down on you? And if so, how did you handle it? Jabulani. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, people, I don't know whether people just choose to just, you know, choose to just say, pretend they don't know you. Or is it, is it just because it's not something common to see uh, the type of leadership or the leader I am? But honestly, I tell people this, um, it was my cabinet secretary that actually um, made me more confident. So we would be in a meeting and maybe um, some documents would not be given to me and would be given to him. He would say, oh, give her as well. She deputizes me. So she's this. So the fact that he also made sure that people understood who I was and people acknowledged who I was, it became easier for me. And then once I got that confidence from him, I owned the space and I did what I did and I became the person that I became. Um, what did you do at the age of 20 something that you would say set you apart? Jerry, um, honestly, <laughs> I did everything. Um, there was nothing you could tell Nadia that she couldn't do. So I was this type of person or type of girl that or 20 year old that if I felt like today I'm going to go, um, I was very passionate about uh, fashion PR then. So if I felt like I was going to go for a fashion show, I was going to go for it. I was going to research who is in charge of it. I was going to get myself an, an uh, admission and I was going to write about that event and then I was going to publish it. So I think that set me apart. The fact that I didn't see any limitation, the fact that nobody could say no. In fact, when you say no to me up until today, I will take that no and literally fuel myself and prove to you that I can do that. So I think that's what sets me apart. The fact that I'm very resilient. I'll keep going no matter how many things are thrown at me. I'll keep going. Like I just had a crisis before coming here. I took a deep breath. I prayed and I said, you know what? I need to show up. And here I am. And people would never know that would happen. So that sets me apart. How did you help yourself get back when you wanted to quit? <sighs> I've never wanted to quit. I've never wanted to quit. No matter what, I've never wanted to quit. Because I remember how my late mom sacrificed so much um, for me to get to where I am. I remember how my aunties, my whole community sacrificed so much. Then I remember where I come from and I remember how many other girls before me couldn't be or do what I am doing now that makes me and fuels me to keep going because there needs to be 10,000 Nadias out there. And that's why I never quit. Things get hard. As I said, I cry. I take time off. I go into this hiding place. I do what needs to be done, but then I come back stronger and I keep going on. And so we should never quit. Never, never quit. Sometimes it's so hard and overwhelming having to be responsible for others' mistake. How do you deal with that? I usually give myself a pep talk. I tell myself, um, there's really nothing you can do more. 
It is what it is. I live by that. It is what it is. It's their mistake. It's being reflected on me. That's fine. I've learned, like for me, I've learned how to have boundaries. So I'm, I'm, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm an empath, which is very challenging. Um, but then from being an empath, a lot of things or a lot of people have betrayed me. A lot of people have disappointed me but I'm learning how to create boundaries. So sometimes you just have to create boundaries and you just have to force yourself to be very mean at times, even though you don't want to do that. Um, let me see, very insightful, thank you. I like that you've touched on mental health. Have you ever experienced imposter, imposter syndrome? Yes, I experienced that a lot. If yes, how do you deal with it? Um, I, I pull myself out of whatever it is that I'm in then I look at Nadia as a reflection. You know, sometimes you have to do crazy things to make yourself feel good. I look at my reflection and I, I look at myself as an object and I tell myself, you've done that. And sometimes I write down everything that I've done. So I keep a copy of everything that I've done. I keep copies of the interviews I've done, the videos I've done, the work I've achieved, everything so that I can remind myself. And then I have sticky notes. I used to have a lot of them. Now I just have one left in my toilet. And I write things. So when I see, or sometimes I feel like imposter syndrome is coming at me, I read those and they remind me. Um, I also kind of cultivate hobbies. So if you see me cooking a lot, um, if you see me cooking a lot, that means I'm very stressed. Or if you see me cooking a lot, sometimes I'm, I'm doubting myself about something. So I keep going on. And as a young leader, how can we create conducive um, spaces, conducive to discussion? to discuss mental health issues without the fear of being judged. How can we create spaces? Uh, create it. You want to have a safe space for people to discuss? Start a small one, start a WhatsApp group, start a Instagram group, start a Twitter group. Just start, like do whatever it is. I remember that's how I started. I just started slow, small and, and that's where we are, you know? So just start. Uh, can you expand more on how to reach out to mentors? So there's no formula. So I'm currently, um, I'm currently uh, designing a Pan-African mentorship program that's gonna be that's gonna have two cohorts every year. So just look out for that. But other than myself, I think if you find somebody uh, very inspiring and you want them to be a mentor, just try your luck. Try to reach out to them on social media. If you see them in a networking event, go to them and just try to get their number. Try to speak to them well. Just do just research and everything. So. Try to reach out as many as you can, then you'll get to one person. Getting a mentor is like getting a job. You'll just land somebody eventually. Um, does, any, does anyone look down on you? And if so, how do you handle it? Oh, yeah, I'm human. Um, I've come to the realization that not everybody is going to like me. Not everybody is going to like my ideology, and that's okay. And this is a problem that young people have. Young people want to be accepted by any, everyone. Oh, let me bust your bubble. Um, not everyone's going to like you. And if 100% of the people like you, then there is a problem. Um, so you will definitely find people who look down. I have, I have a lot of people who look down upon me. Um, right now, you know, we're going through a transition. So there are a lot of people who are indirectly, you know, waiting to see is Nadia going to fall? What's going to happen to Nadia? But value system and believing that there is a God that's something that, um, that I work with a lot. So when I see somebody looking down upon me, I smile, I walk away, I, I, I'm very kind to them. And then I speak to my God and I tell my God, I know you will make me shine and rise in front of those who see me as irrelevant. And that's it. And that's how you should treat it. Whether it's you believe in God or a higher power, take it up there. Uh, how do you overcome the challenges you get to face in your career? Yeah, again, I said you just have to just have to be your own vibe, young people. Be your own vibe. Do you be you be authentic and just be intentional and confident with what you've done? Um, I think that's it, Husna. I'm not sure if there's anybody else who has a question for me. Um, someone how I can't. Oh uh, no. I think those are um yeah. I think that's about it. Tusna, I think uh, the questions are done. The questions are done. Yes. Well, thank you so much for taking us through that Q&A. Again, 
some more nuggets from you, which we appreciate highly. And so uh, I'll just read a few of the comments in the chat. Um, let's see. We have Anjeri, or rather, that was a question, but she says, admires your leadership style and resonates with you. And then we have Masi, who said uh, she admires how you have led the way for many young people. And also, she admires how your tenure and she knows you're moving to greater things and she says keep up <laughs> and so um there was also from faith who said uphold an open mind policy to acquire all knowledge making mistakes and learning from them but owning each experience and moving on is central to the group uh speaking of that on challenges was there a day that you ever made a big mistake that you were like mm? If the president does not hold a press conference to just let go of me, <laughs> then uh, I'll survive anything. Um, not really. I'm a very good. I'm a very good uh, understudy. I'm a very good uh, leader and stuff. But I'd say I broke protocol um, on December seventh when we launched Kenya Nimimi um, because I actually made the president dance. I made him get down from the dais and dance uh, to a Tanzanian song <laughs> and yeah that was that moment everybody was just like what has Nadia done but the president just went on with it and he danced and we danced together with him and you know you just deal with it later but but yeah that, that was the biggest mistake that I had made but eventually it came out really well <laughs> We can't hear you, Husna. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm saying, I guess that's uh, some of the parts of having an easygoing president, you know, yeah. <laughs> who loves to dance. <laughs> There's a question. Are, oh, you well. planning, are you planning to be a politician in the future? What does a, what is, what's the definition? Right now, I'm a leader. Um, I was appointed. Okay, let me not be diplomatic, but who knows? I'm planning to become the president in the next 15 years. So, you know, if that is politician enough, so why not? <laughs> uh, how do you address the concept of gender inequality for youth engagement, especially for young women and girls? Um, so there's a lot of work that has been put in, a lot of effort and work that has been put in, both for the government and for the civic society when it comes to gender equality. Um, as we've seen this time after elections, um, there are like about seven governors, you know, who are female, which I personally think is amazing. And there are a lot of members of parliament as well who are women. And I think as we keep going, um, we need more engagement, but it also has to be an intentional thing. I tell people for us to resolve gender inequality, we have to make it intentional and we have to talk to both sides one side needs to understand we're not trying to fight with the other side and the other side needs to understand we're trying to incorporate them together in order for them to work and be able to go so it's really a personal job that we need to do but i think we have actually achieved a lot especially through the ministry of gender uh, and public service there's a lot that has been done when it comes to mainstreaming gender, not mainstreaming, but really tackling the issue of gender equalities together with the civic society and the different development partners. So it's just for us to amplify it more and be more visible about it and be more conditional and really intentional with it. Um, how, okay, no, that's about it. Okay, Husna, Ooh, I think. It was a lovely webinar. I can't wait to see you work in the future. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for the, for the great words. Who's now over to you? I think for the ones who should be saying thank you to you, Nadia, because you've made this uh, webinar so lively and so interactive. And so we're very grateful for that. And uh, I think that brings us uh, to the close of our webinar. But before then, uh, just a few announcements, or rather, some people have been asking how to, they can join the, web, uh, the Women on Boards Network for the junior membership. And uh, what you have to do is you have to make an application to the network and you have to be the ages of uh, 11 to 24. 
but that an exception can be made if you are 24 but you're yet to get your uh your first job so we also try to accommodate those uh members so you make your application and then you pay a registration fee as well as an annual subscription fee and i think um kantai will get in touch with the participants and be able to oh um, our chair has posted the the link that you can get all the information that you need and we'll be happy to have you over at our network it's a lovely network you can see we get to have lovely visitors and very insightful discussions and so um there are a few other upcoming events uh we have the corporate governance um training that is scheduled for september 2022 uh, on 15th from the 5th to the 9th of september and then we also have the 9th women on boards annual conference uh from the 21st to the 22nd of october and so uh we'll share the details uh, as soon as we have them and then we also have the women on boards award of 2022 this is an initiative that the women on boards has to recognize corporates as well as firms or whatever uh, institutions that are very key on championing uh, gender inclusivity on the boards as well as just gender equality in the workspace. And so we call these people our ambassadors. And so you're at liberty of um, nominating yourself and showing how you are um, you're supporting the gender inclusivity and uh, diversity agenda. And you can also get to nominate uh, institutions, firms, or persons that you feel are contributing to their agenda. And so uh, we, uh, we, we instruct you, or rather we ask you to nominate yourself. And these nominations close on the 31st of August. So be sure to put in your nominations and other people's nominations. And also we have the quarterly system for the junior members that is ongoing. And uh, this August was the first month and it runs for the next six months. And so we are supposed to have activities and goals that are going to be able to be achieved within the six months. And we have to make our quarterly reports to, to the quarterly uh, committee. And so we urge you to participate in your quarterlies and make the reports. And uh, well, that brings us to the close of the webinar we want to say thank you so much for joining us and we want to also thank the secretariat for being able to organize this webinar and so thank you so much to kantai to uh, hannah for making this webinar possible and of course thank you so much to our guest speaker miss nadia for joining us and uh, that is it for the webinar and from us enjoy your evening thank you so much Thank you. Bye. Thank you, CAS. All the best. Thank you very much, Miss Catherine. <laughs> Looking forward to meeting you face to face. Yes. I shall make sure we do. Yes, we must. <laughs> okay. Thank you.